more feet today. More pictures of uh, deviant art. So this one, like the previous two images, were photographs from below the feet. Well, one was below, one was above. Um, this one is uh, entirely from above and from the side. So I've got to decide which one to start with first. Mm, I guess blocking them out if I can do the lower one first to fill that space and then the and the higher one will go kind of here. So Uh, blocking the actual sort of shape of these things first. Mm. See the the length of this toe actually is kind of the same length again to there, and then this curve comes out and around the top. And here it just goes straight up to the leg. It's kind of levels off there actually. And then we have a big toe takes up that kind of space. That sort of divides where the feet go, where the, uh, the toes make their way. So each of these kind of arcs up and then has a, a very straight line. Down to this one which kind of goes in and then up to there and, and you sort of see that edge. The dimensionality of these things is almost entirely defined by where the toenails go. So the you can see which side of it you're seeing from where that toenail lands. So for example, these toenails are barely even visible. The ankle is that some sort of chubby bit of tissue. Hmm. It's hard to tell. And I've realised now that if that takes up that much of the page, I really am going to have to be careful with, with fitting the rest of this one in. So, kind of the, the bottom edge of that one comes up to here. And this one, they're almost entirely vertical apart from this toe. Is there, let's get the scale right. Are there any, it's foreshortened a little, so it shouldn't be quite the same length. It's sort of... Well, it is kind of the same length, yeah. So... Whenever you see an artist doing that, like with the, the pencil in the... That's, that's what they're doing, by the way. They're, they're getting a, a scale of something. So this foot comes kind of up here and kind of all the way up into here. This is like where these toes are. There's sort of this continuing section around here. And you have the big toe, and these kind of overlap each other. So, interestingly, that one's like the thinnest because it's covered over the most by the one below. So, in each case, we have kind of just the pokey out edge. Hmm. 
Except it's not really like that, they kind of come up to... <sighs> so here this toe kind of has that shape to it. Kind of has a sort of undecided curve. And where this comes out, the toenail actually. I feel like that's too fat and not long enough. Like if you, if you look at the distance between the thinnest part of that and the, thin, and the sort of fattest part of that, it's the same. But the thinnest part of this is about the same as that, and th this is way bigger. So this, I feel like this should actually come out a lot further. Like this, this my razor. You have the narrowest part here where this kind of top edge is. And from there it goes straight outwards. From here you pretty much go straight down until the big toe. And the narrowest point there should be the same as the distance between that edge and like the root of that toe. I have not given myself enough space on the page to do these feet correctly. This is problematic. But we will endeavour. So the fact that this comes straight down here kind of is a bit of a boon because that means that we can then bring this curl down to here, we know that that toe's there which then gives us a good spacing to get these right and that one you can actually see the underside whereas this one just goes straight down into it and this one actually comes out from in front of there Hang on. No. That comes down and then out. It's not a big bulbous thing. And here it sort of swishes down. And we have like the front. There seems to be in this one there's a line coming down here and this one there's a line coming down here. It's almost like that's like part of the shape of the foot itself, part of the contour. I have no idea how to capture that information. So this toenail essentially comes out here and, and that sticks out a little bit from where that would have gone. Sharp turn there.
Feels not quite right, but I'm not sure why. Like, this should get narrower near the tip. I mean, this needs to be kind of more bulbous like that. I think it's because they're too uniform. When the toes are too uniform, they look kind of fake. A toenail there and a tiny hint of toenail there. Part of the problem is that I'm doing them too rounded and they each need to have a kind of a knuckle. Can toes have knuckles? Is that what that's the right name for that? See these ones, they, they don't really have that, but this does have a kind of bulbousness to it as this does here as well. And my sketching is terrible because what I'm basically saying is there is a line somewhere in this cloud of possibility. That's, that's what it is really. It's, it's like a probability cloud that there is a chance that somewhere in there, there's a toe. <laughs> right. Ink time. May do a second pass on this, but... Uh, Ink time. Let's do this one first because I feel like this one went a little bit better than the first. So this one, the first one went a little bit better than the second. I do like the fact that some of these lines are so smooth that you can do them as a single motion. Just kind of add a little bit of joy to the process. Start with this big toenail, which has a nice kind of curvature to it. Uh. Oh, you see the mistake I've made there? That should come down in front. Well, that's a pisser. I 
I just got to treat all these things as learning experiences. That's what they are, really. They're learning experiences. I think if anything I've made this toe too long and the others by comparison look weird and squidgy. It's like this toe has gone out for a little adventure by itself. Um, do I want to shade this? What I do want to do actually is add the blanket underneath. Not that it really helps me with the Doesn't help with the form so much, but it's uh, I don't know. It makes me feel better. line needs to come down here a bit because there's a definite shade there and I'm going to shade the toenails um, nothing I'm gonna leave the rest because they are black toenails I feel like that's something that I should capture which also means that I get to capture the sort of shiny spots If I was going to shade this one, I'd have to colour the section here, the inner edge of each toe, and this one's completely bright, pretty much. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I do. I'm going to attempt to, to hatch this a little bit. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave those as they are. Let's get some of the pencils off.
I think this one gets way too narrow there. Basically, all these lines need to move about an inch that way, and this would look fine. But because I had to cram it into the space that was left on the page, I really <laughs> fucked myself up there. I just... Uh, I didn't give myself enough room to finish that part of the image. Ugh. I thought maybe shading the blanket would help, but it didn't. Let's um let's experiment. <laughs> Say we were to shade this, where would the dark areas go? That's in shadow. These areas of the toes are in shadow along these edges. This part of the foot is in shadow. Kind of to there. And then you have just this kind of underside edge here, all the way up. And that's kind of it. So like, if we were to shade that, how would that look? I think that might look okay.
No, it did look terrible. Why does it look terrible? I've darkened the areas that were meant to be darkened. But then my value assessments here are all wrong, because yes, that area is dark and that area is dark, but this is definitely brighter than this. Uh. Problem is, this whole foot is in shadow. But I can't show you the whole thing. This one doesn't actually look too bad by comparison anymore. I've made the one that looked better look worse, and the one that <laughs> looks pretty bad also looks worse, but it doesn't look as worse. God help me, what have I done? I think maybe I need to do like a whole thing where all I do is like experiments with hatching just to try and get a grip on this shading method that I've attempted like four times now and keep failing at. Yeah, I should have given up when I was ahead. Not that I was ever ahead, but I should have given up before I was like last place. So There's kind of an extra darkness here. Would it help? Would it help if I extended these lines out to this sort of level? Would it make any difference whatsoever? This is the hair thing all over again. <sighs> Sometimes in life I think you just have to say, I fucked it and I know that I fucked it. And it's not going to get any better. And putting more ink on the page is not going to improve it. <laughs> Shouldn't have tried to shade it. Shouldn't have attempted to capture any of the values of this because it's just not a... It's not a well-lit image to begin with. <sighs> Another failure. But let's not forget that there were a lot of failures in the first week last, last month. So... Let's, let's strive for improvement, yeah? I think this is why most people start with pencils first. Like, as in, like, they don't even bother trying to shade their images or anything. They just, they go straight in with just pencil art. And they'll, they'll produce a load, of, a load of pencil sketches. But they won't ink them. They just do the pencils and keep them as studies. Because as soon as you try and ink them, you then... You're taking them to black and white, and it's just... Ugh. Big fail.